I'll start with a public feelings first. I'll start it. <coughs> All right, if you'll find your seats, we'll get started this evening. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start the evening with a, um, the annual performance report. Uh, Dr. Hines is going to present that. At the end of his presentation, if anyone has comments, we'll ask you to approach the podium and state your name. And if you'll keep your comments to two minutes, we'd appreciate it. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Hines. Thank you, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, and members of the audience. Uh, tonight, we're going to present a report on the 2013 annual performance report. Uh, it's uh, a couple of things I'll, I'll just share right off the bat. I'm going to be sharing some data. Some of it is more than a year old, so we may have received already reports on more current data, just, just to kind of clarify. But this is a report that we, uh, we do each year um, at this time of the year. And there's been some changes. As, as everyone is probably very well aware, we've switched from the previous assessment to the STAR assessment. And the, the prior report was called the AEIS, or the Academic Excellence Indicator System. And that's transitioning over to a new report called the Texas Academic Performance Report. And so it's a little different format, and uh, this report will look different than it has in past years. It is available uh, currently in its entirety on the CISD website, and at the conclusion I will briefly show where you can access all the information on the district's website. It's a compilation, actually, of several reports into one. And uh, just to highlight what it's made up of, it's made up of the, the biggest part of it is the Texas Academic Performance Report, or we refer to it as the TAPER. And that also includes our bilingual and ESL report. We also include the PEAMS Financial Standards Report. And this is actually a year behind, so it's for the 11-12 school year. And uh, that information is on the TEA website, and we have a direct link to our report, uh, as well as there's the campus performance objectives or the campus improvement plans, which we had presented uh, earlier this year. And we also uh, we report on violent or criminal incidents, including our policies, which are our handbooks and procedures for violence intervention. And then the final part is reports on student enrollment and academic performance in post-secondary institutions. And that's actually a new report this year, and that's on our website as well. Um, it is a PDF that is sent to us, so um, we put that on the website. A couple of things, the, the Texas Academic Performance Report is new and it provides results from the STAR and the TAX, which is being phased out this year's juniors, I believe, are the last class to be under the TAX. The taper includes a STAR progress measure. You know, how did we do compared to how we did the prior year? It also includes a fifth and a sixth year extended graduation rate. So that's new this year that they're carrying out students who come back for a fifth year or even a sixth year to see how we did. And then there's the PEAMS Financial Standards Report. There's a lot of information in all these reports. I'm not going to present them all tonight. I know you're glad to hear that. I'm just going to present uh, some of the highlights that are in the report. Uh, just a couple of things quickly is our uh, attendance for the 2013 year. As reported, and then I'm going to report, this is as reported in uh, this document, it's 53,632 students. And you can see in 2003, we were at 37,835. So we've had some <coughs> growth. What does CISD look like? Well, we're made up of, and there's the breakdown of our populations. We're 6% African American, 33.7% uh, Hispanic, 53.7% white, half percent American Indian, 3.2% Asian, 0.2% Pacific Islanders, 2.7% two or more races. We are 35.9% economically disadvantaged. We had 1.5% of our students receive disciplinary placements, and 12.3% of our students are English language learners. Now, um, when we can, we would like to show how we did. We're, we're, we're surrounded by many uh, fine school districts in our area, and so just we always like to give a context to how are we doing, and it, I know it helps sometimes to see how we do compared to our neighbors. So, um, and several of these reports will have that information, not all of them. Um, the first one is the percent of our students that met level two in all subjects. Obviously, that's going to vary from grade, to grade level to grade level. 
test the test, but we had 86% compared to the state's 77%. <clears throat> and in looking at our ELL students, we had 55% uh, compared to the state's 53% at level two on all tests. <clears throat> Another area we look at is what percent of our students achieve level three, which is the highest level on the uh, STAR test. And we had 21% of our students do that on all of their subjects tests compared to the state 13%. And we had uh, for ELL students, 4% of our students had a level three performance on all of their subjects uh, compared to 3% at the state level. <clears throat> and one, another interesting piece of information that we like to look at in, in Obviously, we, we study our data because we want to improve. We know there's areas to continue to improve. Is looking at what percent of our students who failed the prior year were able to pass uh, this last year. And so we had 51% in reading pass compared to 43% at the state level, and 57% in math compared to 46% at the state level. So that's what we look at in terms of conversions, trying to get students to be successful who weren't the prior year. Um, another interesting report is the percent of students passing the July end of course. So we retest our high school students in July, uh, and we track data by those who receive an intervention and those who do not receive an intervention. We have, uh, this last year, we ran a, a summer boot camp for students in their subject area test, and that, that area is represented by the blue column and the gold column is, are the students who had no intervention that summer that we know of. That doesn't mean they didn't practice or didn't do other things at home. It just means they didn't participate in ours. And so um, and you can see the, the breakdown. Obviously, some subjects had better return than others. Um, but overall, 68% of the students who went through the intervention passed Algebra 1, 69% in English 1, 71% in English 1 writing. Biology, we had 60% passing with the intervention, 59% in English 2, and 58 in English 2 writing. And starting this year, they'll be combining English and writing on the same day. So it'll still be, they'll still be tested, but it'll be different, different format. <clears throat> now for the <clears throat> percent that met or exceeded progress, another interesting uh, piece of information that we're, we're very interested in is what percent of our students met the expected or exceeded the expected progress from one year's measure to the next. And at the state level, 62% did in reading, and at our district level, we had 67%, 59% of the state in math, we had 65% of our students met or exceeded. And we're working on this because we know this is also very important in writing. Uh, we had 48% met or exceeded progress compared to the state's 45%. The attendance rate for the 2012 school year, and this is a year behind, uh, but that's how it's reported. We had 96.1% uh, attendance. 2011-12 school year compared to 95.9% at the state level. Annual dropout rate, something that uh, we hold very near and dear and been working on for since, since I've been here, I don't know. Um, it is 0.1% uh, uh, in the grades 7 and 8 and 0.5% in grades 9 through 12. And at the state level, it's 0.3% in grades 7 and 8 and 2.4% in grades 9 through 12. And that's something we're very proud of. So the state also does a report tracking a cohort of students, which are a group of students that will start <clears throat> as ninth graders and then what happens to them four years later. And um, so we track that. And of that group um, for the state, 87.7% graduated four years later. For us, it was 95.5% for 2012 cohort. 2% uh, of our students continued for another year, 5% at the state level. 1% of our students received a GED as, as it was the same at the state level. And 1.5% of our students dropped out compared to 6.3% at the state level. Another area we look at is what is our participation on the recommended or distinguished achievement plans. And of course, that's graduation plans are going to be changing beginning with the incoming ninth graders. So we'll have to uh, come back later this year and present to the board our, our graduation plan recommendations. Um, but that's requirements are in the process of being 
to change at the state level. Uh, but prior to that, students were tracked on the recommended or the DAP, the Distinguished Achievement Program. We had 89.1% of our graduates um, graduate under that plan, which we're very proud of, and that's a, a minimum of uh, Algebra two in that particular graduation plan <clears throat> in two years of foreign language, compared to 80.5% at the state level. We had 31.3% of our students take AP test, compared to 21.9% at the state level. Of those students, 67.9% scored at or above the criterion, compared to 50.8% at the state level. In 2012, 75.3% of our graduates took either the SAT or the ACT <coughs> or both, compared to 66.9% at the state level. Of that group of students, 41.4% scored at or above the criterion on the state or on the SAT or the ACT compared to 24.9% at the state level. So they set, a, they set a minimum score, what they expect in terms of being college ready, and that is how our students compare to the state. Switching to the financial data that's shared uh, for the uh, PEAMS data, uh, I'll, I'll mention the tax rate. This again is behind the uh, in 2011-12 year, I think our tax rate is actually even lower now. It's 129 and a half cent. There is not a state average uh, kept on that. You can see how our districts near us tax. And then we've also our, our um, district has been recognized by the comptroller's office. The financial allocation study for Texas or the FAST is a report released by the Texas Comptroller's <laughs> Office that rates school districts in, on their academic performance <clears throat> in relation to their cost to taxpayers. Conroe Independent School District is one of only eight school districts in Texas to have earned five stars in each of the four years since the inception of the program. So we're very proud of that in our, in our uh, financial performance. <clears throat> Another thing we look at is what it, how are those funds spent? And you can see how we compare to the state. I won't go through all the categories, but instruction, 61.3% of our, uh, our M&O, our operating expenditures, go into instruction compared to 57.58% at the state level. And it wasn't that many years ago, I remember Dan showing the chart, Mr. Cox showing the chart, and when the state actually had a higher percentage in, in instruction. And so we made up that ground and then some over the years. Um, you can see uh, where we spend in terms of, uh, I'll look at the bottom one is security. We, we're 1.05% or roughly 1% of our budget on security compared to 0.78% at the state level. Uh, we're very close in many areas. Uh, transportation, we're higher than the state average. We're at 4.67% compared to the state's 2.87. Health services, very close. Uh, guidance and counseling, very close. School leadership, we're above the state average. Um, and so this gives you kind of a breakdown of where we are. General administration, we're at 1.6% compared to 3.1% of the budget compared to the state level. For staff information, 52.1% of our staff are teachers compared to 51% at the state level. 2.4% are campus administration, 0.4% in central office. 27.7% in auxiliary departments. Our average years of experience for our teachers is 11.9 years. The average years in the district is 7.8 years. We uh, are a growing district, so we, we add people constantly. Our turnover rate is 11.9% compared to the 15.3% at the state level. And our average teacher salary is $50,927 compared to $48,821 at the state level. Another part that we report annually are the violent incidents. These are incidents that are defined by the state. If they're entered, we report, um, and a lot of these sound worse than they are. Um, but the, there were 11 campuses with 26 incidents, and that's actually down uh, from the prior year. Um, we have about, let's see, it's prior year, it's 48 incidents at 10 campuses. Um, a couple of changes. I know there was a change this year in the definition of the switchblade knife, which would no longer be an illegal knife. And then um, there's a couple other small changes. The 
felony controlled substance most commonly is somebody who took a pill out of somebody's uh, prescription bottle and brought it to school and tried to sell it. So a lot, of, a lot could be done to reduce that. We've worked on that. It's actually gone down over the years, but a lot can be done. One of, I know last year we did a few initiatives with taking back drugs and opening up uh, police collecting prescription medicines in the, in the community in an effort to try to get people to bring in their drugs and get them out of the house where it can be tempting um, people to take. <clears throat> the annual performance report, including the taper, uh, will be posted or is posted already on the website. Uh, we'll also put copies of the report in our campus libraries. I also have about uh, 15 or so copies of hearings in the help themselves. They want to get a hard copy and try not to put too many trees tonight and make more copies than we need. Is there everything you need is on our website? And if you're very willing, I'll show you just quickly. If you want to look up more information, if you go to the Conroe Independent School District website, if you go under accountability, which is under the quick links, if you pull that up, uh, there will be the 2012-13 district TAPR reports. That's what we just put the highlights of. There's also one for each campus. There's a glossary if you wonder how do they calculate that or what does that mean. And then there's prior year AEIS reports if you want to look back. And there are, a lot of, there are some similarities over the years, so sometimes if you want to compare some of the things are, are going to be in prior reports. In addition, we also have over um, here the entire annual perform performance report uh, over, under academic reports 2013. There's the 2012 report. And there's also our district improvement plan as well as the campus improvement plan. So everything you want to get is right there. If you want to see our board policies <coughs> under CISD policy as well as our student handbooks, that's where you'll find policies and procedures as they relate to uh, the discipline. <coughs> and that concludes the summary this evening. All right. At this time, if anyone's interested in making comments, we'll ask you to approach the podium and state your name and make your comments. Any takers? <laughs> can, can we look at that slide again where you were talking about the percentage of spending? Can I just ask a question about that real quick? So I'm looking at IC instructional leadership 0.68 and state averages 1.44. As an SE school leadership 6.04 and one of the states 5.76. What is the difference between leadership, um, instructional leadership, and school leadership as far as this is concerned? Yeah, school leadership is your principal's offices, and uh, instructional leadership is your curriculum department up here at Central Office. Yes. So we're okay. spending quite a bit less in our instructional leadership than we are in our school leadership, which seems to be above state average. Is that, is that am I reading that correctly? We're, and, and the administration, we're lower in several areas than they are, they are at the state because the port, you force stuff down to the campus level versus mm -hmm. central. I think that's generally true. We try to put our resources on the campuses uh, versus the central office. Yeah. I, I would <coughs> also point out that we're larger than most districts, so we're, we're able to leverage some of our central administration, both curriculum and administration, across a larger number of schools. So that helps you lower the percentage. Okay. Any other questions or comments, I should say? All right. That concludes our public hearing. Thank you, Dr. Hines. You're welcome. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Sanders. All right. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6.20 p.m. If you would, please stand as Mr. Scott Kidd leads the invocation and Mr. Datron Williams in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, before I do uh, begin the invocation, Ironically, I remember I led the uh, prayer uh, before last year's meeting, and I felt bad the entire meeting because I did not acknowledge, at least publicly, how overwhelmed and appreciative 
we are as a board of, of, of all the appreciation and support. And I think I say this for all of us that we're, we feel extremely blessed and, and, and consider it a, a huge privilege just to serve. And so I didn't want to start the meeting without recognizing all this behind us and just to, again, say thank you. But if you would, please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Uh, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the rights and the freedoms that we enjoy in this country, Lord. Thank you for the, for the opportunity to uh, celebrate the life of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, yesterday and, and all that he stood for and the impact that he made on our country and on our, our public schools. Dear God, we know that you're here and we ask for your guidance and your direction. Dear God, we know that you're in our hallways and our offices and our lunchrooms and we ask for wisdom and for patience and we know that you're in our classrooms dear lord and we uh, we ask for blessings and protection upon our children god just thank you for the privilege to serve your children and just be with us tonight in your name we pray amen amen, amen. i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas side, I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Kidd, Mr. Williams. Item 2A, Special District Recognition, Dr. Stockton. It is School Board Appreciation Month in the state of Texas, and we are so appreciative of our school board. Uh, here to share the thoughts of our, our, of our schools is Julie English, principal of Colson Tuff Elementary School. Julie? Good evening. Yeah. President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board, I'm here tonight along with other administrators and staff to acknowledge and celebrate all the things that you do for our students, faculty, and community of the Conroe Independent School District. While January is designated as Board Appreciation Month, we know that you all work tirelessly, tirelessly day in and day out to ensure student learning and success at higher levels. We know that you ha all have jobs and other obligations, but yet you keep our students a priority for you. We enjoy seeing you when you come to our schools for Friday visits and at numerous events throughout the community to show your support for our students and our faculty. You have been instrumental in ensuring that we have a well-renowned and world-class school district. Our boys and girls and faculty have enjoyed creating all the small tokens of our appreciation that you see around the room. And rest assured, that they know who you are and appreciate everything that you do for each and every one of them. On behalf of all the administrators and staff, we want to thank you for all you do. You truly make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 2B is citizens' participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? Yeah. All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution to complaints or concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for the presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Kim Jackson.
Good evening. My name is Gregory Davis. I'm currently the member chair for the Conroe, Texas State Teachers Association. These are my constituents. This is Tarita Edmond, who is our treasurer, and Ms. Kim Jackson, who is our vice president. And we have stood today just to say thank you guys for all of what you've done for us. We want you to know that we are behind you 100%. We want you to be encouraged in all that you do because we realize that you don't have to do what you do outside of what you already have to deal with. So on behalf of TSTA Conroe, we just want to say thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. Appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, great. We're going to move item nine, human resources, naming of a principal Conroe High School up is our next item on the agenda. Dr. Stockton. All right. As you know, the most important thing that I do as superintendent is recommend great people to you uh, for your consideration in hiring them. And I'm very pleased to recommend a great person today who is already uh, the principal in our school district, currently the interim principal at Conroe High School, I guess formerly the principal of Peak Junior High. I'd like to recommend Dr. Mark Weatherly for the position of Principal at Conroe High School. So, so All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed? Dr. Weatherly? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, and school board members for the opportunity to speak this evening. I want to truly thank you for the opportunity to lead Conroe High School and for entrusting me with the flagship high school of our great district. I am honored, humbled, and proud to be the new principal of such a respected school such as Conroe High School. Realizing the magnitude of this position only increases the motivation I already have to see our school succeed. Dr. Curtis Null has truly set the bar high for our school, and my goals include to continue to increase the high expectations our school and our community have. Of course, this evening would not be possible without the support of many caring people in my life. I want to thank my wife, Suzanne, herself being a former teacher and principal and current professor, my children, Sean, who is working this evening. That's good. Um, <laughs> Chad, who's here, Sydney, Luke, and Lane, who is outside with my wonderful mother-in-law, uh, Doreen Gerzak, my father-in-law, Art Gerzak, and of course, I want to thank my mother, Linda Weatherly. Being a part, being a Part of being a leader is being influenced by other leaders and gleaning part of their leadership into my own. I want to thank Dr. Stockton for his belief in me and always putting students first in every decision. Dr. Hines for his words of advice, Ms. Gail Drummond for her vision, Dr. Curtis Null for his encouragement, and Mr. Mike Null for showing me nice guys really can succeed. <laughs> in conclusion, I'm very ecstatic to be a part of a fine high school so rich in tradition and such an academically driven district. I know that with the leadership of administ administration, excellent teachers in the classroom and support staff, parental support, and a motivated student body, Conroe High School will continue to excel in all facets. Thank you for this opportunity to be the principal of Conroe High School. Thank you, sir. Proud of you. Great job, sir. Congratulations. Well deserved. Y'all sure y'all don't want to stay for the budget? It's good stuff. All right, next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. I believe all members of the board have had that. Is there anyone that would like to remove any item? If not, move it. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any discussion or comment? If not, all in favor and all opposed, the motion carries. Item 4A, Curriculum and Instruction, Texas Education Agency, Educator Excellence Innovation Grant, Dr. Stockton. Yes, Dr. Hines to come up and present a grant opportunity that we'd like to run before you. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, um, tonight I come before you to uh, request your permission 
uh, that we can apply for the uh, Texas Education Agency Educator Excellence Innovation Grant. Um, this is a uh, purpose of this grant is to improve educator quality and effectiveness, resulting in improved student academic performance. The CISD Educator Excellence Innovation Grant Plan is to request funds necessary to pilot a new instructional support position at four intermediate schools in four junior high schools. Um, this would also include one paraprofessional position to support the grant as well. Um, <clears throat> there, the, there are approximately, um, the responsibilities of these instructional personnel would include and support the required and preferred practices that were outlined in the grant. So basically the state's outlined what they want us to use the money for, what we can use the money for, and that would be uh, for induction and mentoring, which is uh, working with our, our new teachers or teachers new to CISD. And then because we're a fast-growing district, we're always adding people. And so that's uh, an area that we really want to get better at and keep improving in. The evaluation of our staff and our data, um, the professional development and collaboration. So we see that as a, an area that this position can focus on uh, how to combine based on our student needs, how we can improve as a, as, a, as a teaching group. And then strategic compensation and retention. Of course, the purpose of this is to support our teachers, help them grow, help them get better faster, and keep them uh, in positions. And then also to help with recruiting and hiring. And then this position in and of itself would create a pathway or another place that teachers could aspire to, um, not just teaching. And so that's one of the goals of this grant is to create more pathways for teachers professionally to grow. And so that would do that in creating this position. Uh, the grant um, is a two-year grant with the possibility that the grant would be funded in the next biennium, but that's on a two-year basis. There will be approximately 30 grants, uh, grants awarded statewide, and the amounts will range from 50000 to $1 million. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking for roughly $775,000 in that range and obviously we can if we get less we can do less and um, but that's what we're asking for uh, there are no matching or in-kind dr brown there's no matching or in-kind <laughs> funds required and there's no obligation for the district to continue beyond the funding cycle i appreciate seeing that in there and i didn't have to call and ask you yeah um, and so I, I we're asking your permission 100 percent supportive of it i just wanted to ask why the intermediate and junior high well, I mean, since it's a mentoring of teachers, it's we could do this at all levels. We try to target uh, our, you know, a lot of our high schools have a, all of our high schools have associate principals for curriculum and instruction, and, and they're they're structured a little bit different because of the size. And there's also the ability of uh, some of the high school allotment funds to assist some of the high schools. And so, really, we just targeted what are our our, our, our next set of big schools, and looking at obviously the the. Um, you know, we could go anywhere. It's one of those things where we could pick anything. There's a lot of discussion and looking at data, but but we kind of focused on the middle levels. Dr. Hines, will we be hiring with any of these dollars, or is this simply support dollars towards the staff we have? It's actually hiring or creating eight new positions. And so with those positions that we do, would we hire with the intent that they know that it's a two-year position unless the grant is extended? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So with all of our grants, when we hire people, they're, they're given notice okay. that it's only as Just long as the grant. Just want to make sure that. We did the same thing with the RF funds a few right. years ago. I move the adoption. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any comment or discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Thank you, Dr. Hines. All right, item five, admin, item five A, administration recommendation for architectural and engineering services, Dr. Stock. Mr. Foster, if you'll come present that item. Good evening, President Sanders, Dr. Stock, and members of the board. It's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for your uh, approval the recommendation for firms for, to provide architectural and engineering services. We advertised and solicited for these services uh, as we're moving out of 2008 bond funds and getting uh, in preparation for the future, looking forward. Um, we uh, advertised for the services. We held a mandatory pre-proposal conference, and I had 16 uh, firms respond. Of those 16 firms, uh, we set a date to receive qualifications. 
qualifications were due on January 7th, and we had 11 of those firms respond. Ten of those being architects, one being a standalone engineering firm. After careful consideration and reviewing all of these uh, uh, qualification statements, portfolio, portfolios, it is, uh, it is our recommendation for architectural engineering services that we uh, set up the following. Uh, three firms, PBK Architects, Bay IBI Group Architects, and DBR Engineering to perform the, the services that we require from now moving forward and set up as an alternate in the event our uh, workload increases beyond their capabilities to have SHW Group as that alternate. Each of these firms has been involved in the Houston area and in Conor ISD in the past and the present. Uh, I have experience working with each, each of these firms directly and, and I believe and our, my department believes uh, they will be able to assist us to a smooth transition into future projects. So at this time, I request your approval of these firms for these services. Is there a, so move? There's a motion. I'll second. And a second. Any discussion or comments? Yes. Um, are there any changes here um, I, from the 2008 uh, package? Um, are there any changes here? No, our, our primary firms are, as they're listed, uh, in the 2008 bond referendum, we had selected uh, PBK Architects to run kind of point on the group. Bay, Bay IBI uh, at that time was Bay Architects. They uh, delivered one project for us and another smaller firm, uh, PNP, which has since gone out of business, provided a lot of services for our, our uh, additional renovation projects. So the only change in that is PNP is not there anymore. And as an alternate, I, I so so we've used DBR. Yes. Okay. And 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 when you say PBK, they're they're, they're not necessarily. A, you said it's one standalone engineering Correct. company, but uh, we use PBK engineering as well. Within uh, within yeah. the, that umbrella. Yes, where where their services fit. Uh, Thank you. Use them. Any other discussion or comments? All right. All those in favor. And all those opposed, the motion carries unanimously. All right, item two is the bond referendum update. Hey, Mr. Foster, if you'll update us. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's my pleasure to update you on the projects in progress that are funded with the 2008 bond referendum funds. Starting with Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School, uh, this building is approximately 90% complete. <laughs> It is to uh, open in August of 2014. It is on schedule. We are set to receive this building uh, in the spring for the, the district to uh, move in and set up uh, and get that building ready for school for the next school year. Uh, this, the, the state of the building is, as you would expect, 90% complete. The, the finishes are coming in. Uh, the casework, the carpet, the ceiling, the lights, things of that nature are all, are, are all in progress. A genie's Gene E. Stewart Elementary School. Again, this project is also approximately 90% complete. Yeah. Uh, it is on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2014 for the next school year. As you can see, it is in much of the same situation. The finishes are ongoing. Uh, what this picture shows you is what the, uh, the new innovation in this particular floor plan is. This is in the library looking out towards the commons area. Uh, previously, that was a solid wall. So now, you from the common, you can see in from the library, you can see out. Again, this project and both projects are moving along uh, as planned and with no uh, no foreseen issue. A new project to our list is Knox Junior High. Uh, not too long ago, you approved the uh, mechanical renovations to go along at Knox Junior High. There's not much to show you by way of pictures. A lot of the work here is... Is the van permanent? But this project started in earnest over the Christmas holidays. Uh, we set the, the schedule up to move around the building in pods. Uh, so we moved, uh, at the Christmas break, we moved uh, approximately 10 classrooms out of, out of their space into portables behind the building and started the work uh, inside those. So those ceilings came down, the new ductwork, new air handlers, or new, not air handlers, but new boxes, new equipment, new controls, all, all went above the ceiling. Uh, uh, we did our MEP walkthrough with the contractor today. They're scheduled to turn that first pod over to the, back to the school this coming weekend, and then our, our schedule starts to, it's, it's transitioning. 
the plan is to move through that building a month at a time. So when we get to the summer, a bulk of the, uh, the, the work has already been coordinated and started. And we, we make the real mess over the summer. Uh, but this allows us to finish this job, which is a, a major overall, adding fire sprinkler, adding, uh, not adding, but upgrading and uh, adding to the efficiency of the existing air conditioning system so that it meets current air quality standards and current efficiency standards. And then brings that building into uh, compliance with you know, fire safety, uh, security, and things of that nature. So that project is currently on schedule working exactly how it's been planned and is uh, scheduled to be complete by the end of this summer. How old is that system you're replacing in there? Now I'm going to take a wild guess because the right, system is I'm either asking. as old as me or nearly as old as me, uh, but the system was built in approximately 1978. So we got a lot of good years out of it. Yes, sir. Okay. It's time. <laughs> That's what my wife's doing. You want to do the eulogy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the eulogy. <laughs> and that's our current update. Thank you, Mr. Thank Foster. You. Item 6, Business and Finance 2012-2013, Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, Dr. Stock. Mr. Cox, if you'll come present the CAFRA, please. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, before I get into this item, I want to take a moment and and recognize the people that make this happen. And, and we can be very proud of this report. We've got, uh, it's an outstanding report, but it takes a lot of work. And, and it's not work that just happens for a few weeks at the end of the year. It, it happens throughout the entire year. And we've got a great team that uh, I'm pretty confident there's not many districts that can do as much as we do with four people. but. Uh, I want to recognize Darren Rice and his team of Janice Stowers, Cindy Westrup, and Karen Garza. Would y'all say good job? <laughs> they really do an outstanding job, and I think you'll see uh, when our uh, auditor steps up to com make his comments that uh, uh, we're fortunate. We, we have a great pro program and a great team. Uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the 2012-2013 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. The Board of Trustees has received the final draft of the 2012-2013 CAFR. These financial statements are required by state law and have, have been prepared in accordance with the requirements of the Texas Education Agency Financial Accountability Systems Resource Guide. A draft of the report was presented to the Audit Committee on Tuesday, January 14, 2014, for their review and comments. Following the review, the Audit Committee recommended unanimously that uh, the CAFR be approved by the full board. Uh, Kevin Sanford with Weaver and Tidwell is here tonight to answer any questions, and then I recommend that you approve it. And I'd like to ask uh, Kevin Sanford to come forward. Good evening, President Sanders, Board, and Dr. Stockton. Um, Dan pretty much covered everything. Uh, we, we have issued our report. We issued it late last week. Uh, it was an unqualified opinion on the district's financials, which as independent auditors, that's the highest level of assurance that we can give a set of financials. And it states that all the district's financials were materially accurate. And the only really other thing I was going to say is pretty much echo Dan's comments. Um, you know, my firm is a, a large firm that does about 30 to 35 school districts of a pretty comparable peer group to Conroe in terms of ADA. And uh, Conroe's financial department is really second to none. Um, we get a, a great, great support during the audit. Everything that we could possibly need or request is given to us very timely. It makes for a very smooth uh, audit all the way around. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Move to accept. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? Not all those in favor, and all those opposed. All right. Great job, Mr. Sam. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Item number seven: the Executive Session consideration of the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer employee, including but not limited to superintendent evaluation. Closed session of the board will now be held on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Sections 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote 
be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at A, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 6.45 p.m. I'm going to get out of here. The board is now in open session. The time is 8.27 p.m. The next item on the agenda. is action on executive session items. Is there a motion? Mr. President, I move that uh, the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees amend the contract for Superintendent Dr. Don Stockton as follows. Extend the contract for one additional year beyond the current term as set out in the contract and revise the annual salary of the superintendent to be $314,912.50. Which reflects a 3.25 effective 3.25 percent increase effective January 1, 2014, and provide the district provide that the district pay the superintendent's portion of the monthly contribution to TRS and the amount required by TRS for the account of the superintendent. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? It passes unanimously. I believe that completes our agenda. For motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor can stay. Those opposed can leave. Don, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Wait, Dr. Stockton, do you have something to say? Better hurry. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm honored to. Well, Kara's the only here, one here. She knows how I feel. Um, I'm honored to work for the school district, the school board. Um, and look forward to finishing my career. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, sir. We appreciate Stockton. your service. Thank you. Uh, we really do. Ray and Dr. Stockton, you want to sign? Uh, sure. Yes, ma'am. Oh, right. Did you hear what Ray said, though? All